Hey, welcome back. So we've got the mortgage rates are oh, just absolutely hammering buyers and sellers in today's market. And that is not unexpected based on some of the uh, CPI information and other metrics that uh, folks use to determine if inflation is <laughs> under control. And so there's been a lot of folks out there and they're saying, George, what the heck is going on? Well, let's go over that and let's talk about how best to navigate this market. So let's uh, let's pull up our uh, first slide here. And it talks a little bit about the fact that we're heading back up to 7%. And uh, let's hear what Freddie Mac has to say. So basically, their comment is strong incoming economic and inflation data has caused the market to reevaluate the path of monetary policy. What that means is that there's a high probability that they are not going to reduce Fed rates when it comes to uh, the March meeting. Continuing on, leading to higher mortgage rates. Historically, the combination of a vibrant economy, uh, economy and modestly higher rates did not meaningfully impact the housing market. However, right, the current cycle is different than historical norms as housing affordability has absolutely been taking a beating the last, oh, I don't know, four years or so. Uh, just understand, you know, as costs go up, as home prices go up, the affordability for a lot of first-time home buyers, and they're back there going, oh, I know it, uh, are having a lot of problems. Why? Because it costs more. To get that to uh, reverse course, well, it's going to take uh, a lot more events going on than what's happening. And a lot of folks are saying, how come we are seeing an increase in prices even though uh, interest rates are you know, heading in an upward trend? Well, okay. When you have so few homes, we technically only have 50% of the homes that we normally should have. We should have 12, 15,000 homes right now. We're at like 6,000, just shy of 7,000 homes. And so we're really struggling with inventory. Now, seasonally normal, we are seeing some inventory come on, but we're not seeing a ton of that happen. So if we come back here, and we remember to like, subscribe, and share. In fact, smash that subscribe button. You can be informed of what's going on in real time. But when we take a look at Freddie, Freddie's slide here is super, super interesting, right? Because as you can see, and they do a running seven-day average also. And so they're, they lag just a tiny little bit. Why is that important? Well, because rates actually have bumped up just a tad bit more than this. Hang on a second. So if we come over here and we blow this one up, not in the literal sense, you can see that as of yesterday, we came down uh, just a tiny, tiny little bit. Uh, but the 30-year jumbos, they went up almost uh, half, right? So there they go. Uh, and then, of course, uh, when we take a look at the other rates, you can see red is bad. That's going up. And green is good. That's coming back down. And, uh, you know, for those uh, that remember the... Alice in Wonderland song. Anyway, we won't get into that. So remember, uh, red pill or <laughs> green pill? Maybe that was uh, a movie also. Anyway, we won't mention that one either. Anyway, when we take a look at these rates and when we take a look at par pricing, here's par pricing rates. I'm going to blow that one up for you. Look at here. So we have our national average. We can see 30-year fix without any buy downs, right? Actually came down a tad bit. Uh, and you can see it's at 7%, 15, uh, 30-year FHA is a little bit more aggressive. Uh, we came down, 5 one arms uh, went up, so they're not very advantageous. In fact, 5 and year 5 and one arms used to be a super awesome rate to consider, uh, especially short-term if you were going to try and ride out either uh, short-term ownership or maybe uh, you're going to you know, leverage yourself against uh, you know, interest rates coming back down. There's no advantage to those right now. And so, you know, 30-year money, five and one arm, or really it's a five and six arm, uh, haven't changed. So, I mean, they, they're they too close to really differentiate a big change. How's that? All right, moving on. Okay, when we take a look at, if we come back to our chart here, hang on a second. If we come in and we take a look at options for you to consider for looking at mortgages, look, here it is. It's free. There will be a link down below. The super important part is the five questions to ask when getting quoted mortgage rates. Super, super important. Please 
please, please watch that, right? Okay, let's talk about the Northwest MLS. All right, so this seven day running average, you can see here that we have 887 new homes that came on market. Uh, again, we've seen 1,091 go pended, and then of course 654 have closed. Uh, what's super important about this is that consistently since October, we have continued to draw down our inventory, and we'll see that uh, momentarily in our stats. And when we take a look at just what's back on market, I mean, this is a, a seller who lost their buyer, uh, price reduced, and our limited inventory, folks, remember, list price is the first impression. If you miss that mark, you are absolutely going to have a negative impact on your the net dollars in your pocket and what concessions you're going to have to give up. So make sure you are picking that correct price because really at the end of the day, when we are down to, you know, basically half of the inventory where we should be at historically, listen, uh, you nobody nobody should be in the canceled or the expired or back on market or list uh, price reduced. Uh, everybody should be basically getting their home sold, price it correctly, and just really dismiss that sentimental equity. All right, the next bit of information that we really want to delve into is kind of, a again, a market trend that we're looking at. That will be uh, average days, on, or not average days, <laughs> average price of current inventory versus average price of sold inventory because it gives us a real-time look each week as to what's going on. So when we take a look at this next chart, What's super interesting is that we're actually, again, still heading into uh, a, a, again, a very aggressive spring market in which we are seeing. So if we blow this up. All right. So as we zoom in on this, our active uh, pr average price actually went up. 0.2%. Uh, Last week we were at 3.4%. And then as far as our average sold price, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, we actually, you know, over last week went up uh, 0.6%. Super interesting as we're seeing these numbers continue to increase, even though we are having uh, mortgage rates increase also. That gives you some really good indicators of where we're going. All right, now let's pop over. Let's take a look at our next slide here. So when we take a look at the Northwest MLS, again, we're looking at, you know, single family only. We don't include condos, vacant land, manufactured homes, uh, multifamily. Those are different reports altogether. We're staying focused on single family residential homes only, including new construction. So Let's uh, let's go ahead and blow this one up. Hang on a second. Let's get this a little bit bigger and let's dial into this one. Okay. As we zoom in on the residential uh, market update for this week, we can see that uh, we've actually had a mild bump in new activity uh, as far as new homes coming on market. Totally normal, seasonally normal. And in fact, we should start to see this come up just a little bit more. The however is year over year, uh, you can see that eh, we're lagging just a little bit, but not a ton. We're only lagging just a nominal amount of homes. In fact, if we look at February, the same month, year over year, again, 2024 versus 2023. So if we take a look at our inventory, we're down about 249 homes. Uh, for just a month, a uh, month to date, right? And this would be up to the 23rd. Uh, 231 homes more uh, on market than we did last year in February. However, you know, we're only down 233 homes and 23 pended homes. And all things considered, that's pretty impressive because rates were quite a bit lower then. Okay, so as you can see, the, the Northwest MLS on a whole is actually doing super, super well. Right now, let's delve into new construction. New construction has continued to be very solid 
Even last year, all through 2023, it is proving to be the same year. Yes, granted, in 2020, 2021, 2022, we saw the consistency of new construction. In fact, we saw a lot of new starts and whatnot. But as interest rates basically doubled from where they were before, even though the builders have offered a lot of incentives, you know, to maintain plat support, understand they are still one of the best moving products right now. In fact, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, let's let's blow this one up. And okay, so let's dial in here real tight on the month of February. And when we look at it year over year, uh, we're doing really well. Uh, we're up 1.1% uh, on new construction. Uh, as far as closed homes, we're up 6.2%, uh, even though we're down basically 12% on uh, existing inventory. Now, when we look at it at the same month, year over year, okay, on solds, last week we were a minus 3.2%, meaning that we had we were lagging, uh, and now we're actually at 0.2 homes above. So we've actually improved, you know, 3.4%. When we take a look at this number here, we see, oh, okay, well, we're only down 6.1% for the same month over year over year. Uh, however, uh, last week we were at 10.7. So you can see that we are actually gaining traction and that is great news for new construction because there's a ton of incentives being offered. All right, so remember, new construction offers a lot of different incentives right now. And here's the funny thing. You need to take a look. If you're really trying to bang on a price, month end, that's actually the best time for a lot of your builder products. Plus, make sure that you know, you're know you asking the right questions to get better incentives. They're not gonna negotiate price, so understand that. If the agent that you're working with does not know how to negotiate or hasn't negotiated how to get the best pricing you know, with builders, uh, you know what? Reach out to us. Let us know. We'll give you some uh, some guidance as to how best to approach builders. And uh, who knows uh, if if there's something that uh, helps you out, that would be absolutely awesome. All right. Now let's head into the next one. So, uh, bank owned REO homes. All right. Uh, REO is real estate owned. That is what uh, bank owned is. Uh, let's let's dive into this chart. But here, just understand. Pay attention to these numbers because there's a lot of folks out there thinking that bank-owned homes are a great value. In our area, they're not, okay? So let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's blow this up. Okay, so as we dial into the bank-owned REOs, we are not doing the discount for the wall of shame because those homes are still existing, and so it's whatever. We did send the video to each one of them just to say, hey, uh, you may want to check out your listing, and uh, there was one person that did change, so I, I guess there is one person. So that's good news. Anyway, these numbers over here, uh, pretty much you need to dismiss, and the reason I say that is, you know, half of and three quarters of Washington State right? There's only 19 homes uh, difference between, you know, year over year. 13 as far as actually new on market. Uh, 11, you know, have closed. Okay, fine. Well, when we have higher numbers here, we have higher numbers here as far as sold and pended. That's a given. However, they're such tiny little numbers. And so when you take a tiny little number and you double it, right, uh, it, it affects these over here. So this is very misleading. So don't be caught up in any immediate news reports talking about how, oh my gosh, uh, we have these crazy numbers when it's not even the case. So remember, banks will remarket their home after doing some basic paint, carpet, and vinyl. They will remarket their home at uh, market value uh, because we're one of the five sweet spots across the United States. All right, so on the whole, the market is actually doing amazingly well. We are seeing a lot of product, a lot of homes coming off market. We're seeing a lot of pent up buyer demand started, you know, you know, meeting what is new on the market. Remember for those sellers, price is first impression. Hands down, price is first impression. Make sure you are not overpricing your home. Uh, it is never a bad thing to let buyers come in and, and escalate prices. And I'm not saying, you know, some ridiculous price down, but 
Keep that in mind. Psychological price point considerations are going to be super important for you. With that, also, remember, if you liked or if you learned any one new thing, if there's any one benefit out of this video, remember to, to, uh, to like the video. YouTube likes to know that you like the information. It helps us to understand what uh, you like and dislike. In the meantime, I will see you guys on the next video. Have a great weekend. Take care.